อันนัตตาเทนันจะเรียนที่นั่นไม่ได้ยินยาตากระตักเพื่อเชื่อ Ethiopia and 
Libya, with them, all of them, with shields and helmets, Goma and all his bands, the house of Togoma, of the north corners of all, and all his bands and many people with thee. Be thou prepared and prepare for thyself, thou and all thy company that are assembled unto thee, and be thou a God unto them. Verse 8. This is a passage I want you to take note. And after many days, okay, thou shalt be visited in the latter years. Two words put together in one sentence, which means the same thing. But it opens up, it expounds the meaning and the depth of this passage, what we're dealing with tonight. Okay? After many days, thou shalt be visited in the latter years. Thou shalt come unto the land that is brought back from the sword and is gathered out of many people against the mountains of Israel which have been always wasted, but it is brought forth out of the nations and they shall dwell safely all of them. A preview. Now, in chapters 36 and back, chapters 37, it's all about, I will just quickly go over that and give you some pointers on that. It speaks of the restoration and the redemption Amen? The restitution of Israel. Chapters 36 and chapters 37. It speaks of the restoration of Israel. We all know that chapter 37 speaks of the dry bones. Amen? So you get the picture now. Okay? Now in chapter 38 and chapter 39, it speaks of this is a prophecy of these end time things. Futuristic events that will happen. And by this time, the church has already been raptured. It won't be here to witness all this. And there are many things that people were talking about. This has happened? Yes, but if we look at it from a perspective, from the prophecy perspective, it speaks of something that will happen in the Great Tribulation. Question, will the church be here during the Great Tribulation? No. No. Correct. Mm. It's already gone. It's out. Home most. Amen. I'm already there. And it will, it will happen before the seven year tribulation period. And so, this passage here speaks of God and Magog in the, in the in gathering of all the nations. Now, first, we want to know what does it mean when it speaks of God and Magog? Who is God and who is Magog? Okay? But first of all, we must know and identify the locations of these places and the names of people that are mentioned in this passage. Okay? Now, it speaks of, if we look back, if we come again, okay, just one out. Whether it's under the sea or in land, 
it will cost. If it's in land, then it will, you know, bring mountains and everything, landslides and all that. But if it's in the ocean, it will cause tsunami. Moving up the tectonic plates underneath, okay? That's what causes. It all starts off with earthquakes. And this one, recently, we all know what happened in 2004 in Aceh, Indonesia. Negative. It happens on Christmas Eve at 7.59 a.m. in the morning when the nation and the world was asleep. There's just a small shook in Aceh. What happened was that it, it caused the tsunami to sweep from, from Indonesia spread to Sri Lanka, India, Bangladesh, all the way right in through India, 20 miles in the land of India, onto parts of uh, Thailand and some parts of China. Just imagine, and the death toll was unimaginable. Over nearly 300,000. Well, uh, they, they say that the death at that time was one, one uh, report says that they have 225,000, and another report says they, they have 290,000 dead. And then there were those that were unaccounted for. And that was in 2004. But this, what we are reading now, and what will also be mentioned in the book of Revelation, is nothing compared. That is nothing. It will dwarf our chase, tsunami, and earthquake. And then do what we are reading now. Amen? And so, this God is heading, if you, if you put a direction for where Israel is, if you look at the geography and the location of Israel, you put a straight line up towards the north. Okay? The first country and city that you will come and point to is Turkey. But if you go beyond Turkey, directing further than Turkey, then the next country that you will come across is Russia. So it speaks of the northern invasion. And so, breaking down again, God is a person, Magog is those alliances and peoples and other places, like they have uh, uh, like alliances, like, uh, um, uh, did you guys know and aware that uh, I think last, last year, there was this biggest movement of this Islamic movement and the communist movement these three leaders came together, the president of Iran, the president of Turkey, and the president of Russia. They came together to form an alliance. This has been established. Asian money are the biggest, in other words, they are the most, uh, have uh, weapons and uh, military powers. Okay? And so, this invasion we're looking at in, in verse in chapter 38 and chapter 39 will be an invasion from the north. Amen. That will be coming to encamp around Israel. And if you would read that there are two parts mentioned here. So question number one. If this Gog and Magog or the Magog or Magog invasion is it the same as the one mentioned in the book of Revelation chapter 20? So now we raise this question, right? Is it the same one? Because if we say it is the same invasion, then we have to mark the time. Okay, let's go quickly to the book of Revelation. Amen? Chapter, chapter 20, verse 7 to verse 9. Now, this speaks of Satan being bound and cast into the bottomless pit for how many years? A thousand years, millennia. Let's read. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters, note, of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle. 
the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. And they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about the beloved city that is Jerusalem. And fire came down from God out of heaven and it down at them. Have a look at this. This is the release of Satan after a thousand years of being locked up, bound up in the bottomless pit. And when he is released, now this is the only part that we read about Gog and Magog apart from Ezekiel. Now, question Is this the same Gog and Magog we're looking at? It does speak the same word, Gog and Magog. Yes? But let me tell you, they are different, Gog and Magog. The word God is a leader. He is, because it's, if we go back, and I will identify God, let's go back to, to Ezekiel 38, quickly. Amen. Verse 2, Son of man, set thy face against God, the land of Magog, the chief prince, of Mesach and Tubal and prophesied against him. Now, who is Gog? Gog is a military leader. He is a, a captain of high distinction and, you know, decorated leader. And may have a look at the word. He is the chief prince. Amen? Or the prince of chiefs. So this would be a world leader that will be coming from the north. And he will be rallying in allies, amen, and formidable uh, uh, like military powers that will be joining them. Note that now as we speak, there is a conflict between Russia and Ukraine. Okay? Now is that something that is telling us about these end times? Yes. But is it in relation to our reading? No. Because how do we know that? We need to know the times mentioned. Amen? The Antiguan invasion, the Magog or Magog invasion, will happen in the tribulation period. So with the Gog and Magog that we read in Revelation chapter 20, it's a different Gog and Magog alliance. Okay? Now I want to zero in and identify who is this Gog mentioned here. I got the Gog that is mentioned here is the Antichrist. It's a figure of the Antichrist. He will be coming in. Amen? And he will be, because he will have this supernatural power. Amen? And with this supernatural power, Thy bow out of thy left hand, and will cause 
like arrows to fall at on thy right hand. What does it what does it specifically mention? The bow and the arrow. Okay? This is the same God we're talking about here. Yep. This is the uh, chapter 38 and chapter 39 speaks of God and Magog. Okay? The invasion of the North, the invasion of Magog. Okay? And it is a continuation. In chapter 39, it's a continuation of chapter 38. Okay? And what does it say in verse 3? Smite thy bow in out of thy left hand and will cause thy arrows to fall out of thy right hand. Okay. Note those emblems, those armories that has been mentioned in the design. What are they? The bow and the arrow. Come with me to Revelation chapter 6. Now Revelation chapter 6 speaks of the four horsemen. Okay? There are many interpretations and, and also a preaching on the book of Revelation chapter 6. But I want us to understand that everything that we, we teach, we need to zero in with Bible, interpreting Bible. Amen. Don't get your reference out of context. Get your reference in context and in line with the Word of God. Okay? How do I know that God, the God that we're talking about is the Antichrist? And it speaks of it in the book of Revelation right throughout. Here is the clue. Now, verse 2. And I saw and behold a white horse. And he that sat on him had a bow. And, and a crown was given him and went forth and given unto, was given unto him. And he went for conquering and to conquer. Now, bow in his hand. What will? What was mentioned in the book of Ezekiel? What will he knock out of his hand? Bow and arrow. Okay, that means that he will defeat him. To knock out a weapon out of someone's hand is to disarm him. Okay. Now, this person, who is this person riding on a white horse? Don't be mistaken this with Jesus Christ, who will be coming back in. Revelation chapter 19. He will also be riding on a white horse. Amen. Now, who is this figure that is mentioned here? This is Antichrist coming in the form of man of peace. He will come in as a deceiver because the world will be lost and broken of the, the Holocaust and the atrocities that are happening all over the world. And imagine the church will be taken out, will be ruptured. There, the word rapture does not exist in the Bible. Okay? But where do we get the word rapture from? It comes from the Greek word made to quota, which is a translation of the Latin word rapturo. Rapturo, that's where we get the English word rapture. Amen? Hallelujah? Can you find in the Bible the word trinity? What do we use the word Trinity? Yeah? Can, do we use the word Trinity to identify God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost? But does, do we find the word Trinity in the Bible? No. <coughs> no. Exactly. So do we find the word Rapture in the Bible? No. no. Do we use the word Rapture? Yes. yes. Because the church will be raptured, my friends. Hallelujah, and that's you and I. We are going home. Amen. 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 And so, who is this guy? God? He will be the Antichrist. And this first God and Magog invasion, or the, the Magog invasion, will happen in the seven year tribulation. In the first, about the first three and a half, or towards the second three and a half. Amen? And this will be the invasion of the Northern Army's alliance coming against Israel. But note, the second Gog and Magog invasion, when, the, when will it happen? After the thousand years. Note the difference? So how the, the 
I, I, what I call the period between the first invasion and the second invasion. The first invasion is led by Antichrist. Okay? The second invasion is led by Satan himself. Do, do you follow? Yeah. Okay, come with me to Revelation. I think we're all lost here. Come to come with me to Revelation chapter 20. Exact words. 
in like manner. In other words, what they what, what did the Hebrews tell Jesus Christ the same? Amen. So they said Jesus that went up into heaven is gonna come back the same. Hallelujah. And so he's gonna come back at the same spot where he took off. Amen. And at that time when Jesus Christ comes back, Satan will be back for a thousand years. And do you know how long the battle will take during the, uh, the, the battle of Armageddon? And do you know how long when they will cleanse the land? Let's go back to Ezekiel. Sorry, I don't have any pictures to put up, so it'll be more like a narrative, uh, you know, what we call uh, uh, a lecturing class tonight. Thereof, graves in Israel. The valley of the passengers, 
or the east of the sea, and it shall stop the nose. You know what that, that, does it mean to stop the nose? If, if, the, if the smell is too much, stench, you're dressed. This is what it brings you. The big king, why would they stop their nose? They put the what in it. They were all over the place. All bodies strewn and scattered all over the place. After the war, eh? may they can't contain the man, the other, he composed the what the only man. Just imagine the stench. One human person, we cannot stand. Imagine the, the past of armies and armies that are all over, scattered all over the place. Man, this is what they will do. And they shall bury God and all these all multitudes, and they shall call it the valley of Hammond God. Now, Hammond God is the word means the multitudes of people. But in other words, they all be allies. Amen. That were defeated. And how long will they do the cleaning? Not the uh, yeah, fighting goes on. But how long will they do the cleaning? Verse 12. And seven months shall the house of Israel be buried of them, that they may cleanse the land. Can you just imagine? Clean and green for seven months? Why seven months? So they need to clear, clear, clear up the land. And then they need to sanctify the land. So that goes to show that there are a lot of dead bodies all over the place. And the passengers, the word passenger means the passerby. People that will be passing by. And they will be just closing their doors. They don't have a way to pass by. This will happen in the seven year tribulation period. Okay? This refers to our God and Magog in Ezekiel 38 and 39. Now, going back to Revelation chapter 20, this is different, but the word now is used. Remember when we when we identify God. World Force, WW1, World War One, World War Two, World War Three, which hasn't happened yet. But this will happen. This will be World War Three in that great scale. And so the word God and Magog becomes a synonymous for evil battles and evil leaders. So now, who will be this God leader? It will be Satan himself. But who is the first God that we read? The world will be the Antichrist. The one that we read in Ezekiel 38 speaks of the one in Revelation chapter 6. The second God and Mammoth that we're going to read is different God and Mammoth. But the name God and Mammoth identifies as evil, wicked rulers. And this is none other than Satan himself. Amen? Let's go to Revelation chapter 20. And we're just going to wind up anytime soon. 20 verse 7 and 8. And when the thousand years are expired, who? Satan? Satan shall be loose out of his prison and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters. Now, before, it was just the modern alliance. Now, it will be the whole world involved. But us Christians and the, and the church will be in Jerusalem. We will be experiencing the 1,000 million rule and reign. After coming back from our reward and, and uh, receiving our crowns in heaven. And how long will that be? That will be seven years in heaven, while the whole world will suffer seven years of hell. Hell on earth, they have to the tribulation. That's why we need to make sure that you get on board flight 777. God's purpose. Amen.
so that we are home and safe. That if we are left behind, no one will stand the chance to witness the great Holocaust that will happen in the seven year tribulation. No one. Even the elect will be renouncing their faith and will be renouncing their law. Amen? Hang on. Are you with me? And that's nine. Have a look at this. The final battle. And they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about and the beloved city. And fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. My friends, the final battle, this is God himself. Our God is a consuming fire. My friends, it will be just like that. Fresh. Not even a battle, not even worth a mention. I will cut the wall, so we better choose sides now. Who we follow? Amen? Because if you're on the wrong side of the team, you will be defeated. Even your leader will be defeated. It's better now to accept the Lord Jesus. You are safe. Amen? Amen. God will intervene. If we, if we read the book of Ezekiel again, God determines and plan. He intervenes in the conventions of men. Amen, amen. Have you ever known about the book of Daniel chapter 2? What does the book of Daniel chapter 2 give us? The dream of Nebuchadnezzar when he dreamt about the statue. Amen. The head of gold. Amen. Uh, which he dreamt of the head of gold and the, the arms and the chest of silver and the belly and the thighs of bronze and the, and the legs and the feet with iron mixed with clay. Have a look at this. This speaks of the entire human history from the time of Nebuchadnezzar or the dark of the head of gold. And it declines in, in, in material you know, value. Gold is most expensive. And then comes silver. Which in other words, the the splendor and 